one thing I've had people ask about as I as I discuss building positions and things like that is like, are you just betting on every team? And the answer is no. Um, I, do I bet on a number of teams? Yeah. Like I, I have a wide, a wide range because that's how my brain works in these seasons where there's more than one. If last year there had only been like two to three serious contenders, then I would have bet that as such. But like, I, I think the Heat could have won the title. I think the Celtics could have won the title. I think the Bucks could have won the title. That's just in the Eastern Conference and none of those teams won. Then you have the West and it's like, yeah, the Warriors could have won. And yeah, the, the Suns could have won, right? And so I do think that preseason is a great time to bet long shots. I don't think you want to bet, like the Celtics plus 550 right now is terrible value. It just is. Like I'm going to be telling you a lot about why I like the Celtics unders for the season. I'm going to be telling you a lot about why I'm prepared to be wrong on that about all these types of things. Um, there is just a lot that has to, to happen between now and then there's just, there's a lot that, that has to happen. So now I think is the time for you to take these long shots and put yourselves in these positions. I think the sexiest one that, and this is one that's already taken money. Um, the Denver nuggets are, are plus 19, 1900. The 19 to one won the NBA title. And that's a very sexy, very sharp, very, there's going to be a lot of folks that are like, you know who I like, it's going to be the Nuggets. I don't think there's bad value on that because I do think there's a good chance. I will say, if you're going to bet a title bet, you better you better feel like they can make the conference finals. Not that they will, but you no. better feel like, don't be taking somebody where you're like, well, I can see them going out in the second round. Yeah, I, I was going to add that too of why would I bet conference instead of title is similarly... I, I only will bet on a team that I feel really good about making it at least the round prior. Yeah. So when I talked about Denver, for example, or Minnesota, and maybe that surprised you here in Minnesota, but if even if I think, you know, the jazz last, last couple of years of jazz, even if I don't believe it all, even if I don't think that they have any real shot and Gobert made them flawed and yada, yada, yada. If I do think they're going to be the one seed, and then you have to expect them to beat the eight seed and be favored and at home against a lesser four or five seed. You have to assume that if they are the one seed, if you think they're good enough to do that. If that's the case, you now have a team in the conference finals at hopefully if you bought the right ticket, a good price. In a worst case scenario, now you hedge. Now you build the position and you say, you know what? I don't like the Jazz here anymore. They're playing the Clippers or they're playing the Warriors or they're playing really anybody we don't like the jazz they're not going to beat them but guess what you're in a powerful position now because even though you want no part of your ticket anymore and you don't think it's going to win you got a 20 to 1 from preseason or a 15 or a 10 and now you can play the other side so to me i i, I want i don't believe at all in my my minnesota timberwolves your minnesota timberwolves really i do not believe they're going to win the title or make it to the finals i don't at all but I think they could be a pretty good regular season team. And if they do, then they have a good shot to get at least to the second round. And now I've got some powerful positions if I'm right about that. So I think you've got to get, you got to believe you can get close. You shouldn't just be taking like total wildcard shots here. Right. I mean, look, it's a lot of these situations. I do think um, you can go the other way and you can bet the favorite now. And then with the idea of, I think they'll make the conference finals and then I'll hedge when I get there with a plus number because that's part of the of the battle here is is it it is painful when it's like you have a 19 yeah. to 1 title odd uh, title future and you're in the conference finals and they're a dog and now you're like I need to hedge this but I have to lay minus 250 on this right and now you're basically having to decide like how like what's an acceptable profit for me right and you, we right. have calculators that can help you with that over at actionnetwork.com and all these things um last thing before we get to some picks though on this is I do want to, want to talk about why I like the finalists, the matchups so much. So yeah, I like to hear this because you know I normally push back on these. So yeah. so tell me on why you love the matchups. All right. So here's why I love the, like the matchups. Whether it's it's uh you can actually do conference finalist matchups, which is amazing over DraftKings right now. Um NFL, you can be a seven seed, a wild card, and you can make the Super Bowl. You have to win three games. Quarterback gets hurt, right? Like Patrick Mahomes loses his mind in the second half versus the Bengals. Not that I'm mad about it. All these things can happen. Okay. In the NBA, it's not really like that. You have seven games. 
The best team is not, let me push back on that. Let me rephrase. The team with a matchup advantage, as long Mm -hmm. as their talent is comparable, is going to win out. The the right team, the right team advances. The right team team that should win the series is going to win most times. Um, We only have a handful of teams. You should only have a handful of teams. Like, I'll just tell you right now, like, the Lakers are the fourth highest odds to win the Western Conference on FanDuel or on DraftKings. You should not bet that right now. No, please, please don't. Don't do it. Don't do that. Like, and this is Brandon, who has, <laughs> and I, I was with him for half the year last year being like, maybe we should bet the Lakers. Uh, No, like, this roster is a train wreck. I don't care if they got Patrick no. Beverly. I don't care if they get Miles Turner. Like, they and I do. Them. I have in the app right now, I have a Lakers title ticket, I believe, in there. It's my one future, but that was a future that I'm already counting basically as dead. It was a future bet on, I think they'll get Kyrie and some other guys. Right. And even that looks like it's dead now. And even that we have to move past from. So here are the teams I think they can win the West the Warriors, the Clippers, the Suns, the Nuggets. That's my list. I don't think the Grizzlies, Mavericks, Wolves, or Pelicans can win the Western Conference. Okay, so you got three teams there. Okay, Uh, in the Eastern Conference, I think the Celtics, the Bucks, and the Sixers right now are the only three teams that I'm willing to say I think can win. Um, The Nets are definitely like a sure wouldn't surprise me. I would put the Heat and the Hawks in a okay, a little surprising, but you know what? Good coaching is good coaching. But if you ask me, all right, who are the two teams that you think have the best value to win their conferences? I would say the Milwaukee Bucks at plus 340 and the Los Angeles Clippers at plus 340. If you parlay those two picks right now on DraftKings, it is plus 1836. You get over 18 to one on the Bucks and the Clippers to make the finals. Not win, not exact outcome, just get there. That that's your finals matchup is Bucks versus Clippers. 18 to one. If I draw out the map of all of the percentage things that have to go right for this to occur, you are absolutely correct that my percentages are not going to work out in a favorable way. I can't sit here and argue like there is an X percent chance of them winning these games where they'll be. Fa- I can't do that. Okay. But what I can say is if I, if, if we do what you like to do, if we take a step back, if we look, if we zoom out, Bucks Clippers, Bucks Warriors, Bucks Suns, Celtics Warriors, Celtics Suns, Celtics Clippers. And I haven't bet all of these because I'm I want to see about the Celtics. That's like that's the team I want to wait on. But the teams that I think will be higher later, like the Clippers and the Bucks, who I think could definitely wind up being conference favorites, depending on how the season goes. I get those bets in now, I add in others later. And now it's an 18 to one here and a 19 to one there and a 21 there. And I'm covering it. And there are teams that I take strong positions on. Never once did I include the Utah Jazz in any of those last year, but that's an easy one. I included the Sixers in like two possible of all of these positions. The Sixers were the only one that I included like twice, like right after the Harden trade. Um, And then there was like another, I think it was when uh, Embiid hurt his hand and there was a bit a dip there. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to hedge this right now. But to me, getting those returns when I think there's a finite number of outcomes, because the title, the conference odds and the title odds all factor in all these different teams and their chances of winnings. And I'm basically like, you could just cut out all these other teams. And it's only these ones. And if you buy them at throughout the season, I found that to be a profitable way to come out ahead. I have a hard time getting there. (laughs) You know this, but uh, I understand it. Uh, To me, I think what you described is if if I at home just want to put my 10 or 20 bucks on a Bucks Celtics or sorry Bucks Clippers finals at 18 and a half to 1 or if I like I don't mind playing matchup as I, I guess actually I would play matchup almost the opposite of you. I don't like the idea of building a position around a whole bunch of matchups. I think that you are chasing ghosts and it's going to be hard to to find the right position i don't mind at all choosing a couple teams that i like and just grabbing a long shot knowing Mm. that i'm probably on a loser here but i'll but sure i'll take my 18 to 1 or i'll 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 put my 10 bucks on this 70 to 1 
And I'll just like, if you're the better that doesn't want to build a position and play all year long, you just want to say, you know what? I kind of like the Clippers. I kind of like the Grizzlies. I'm just going to play them. I'm going to say what's their, their conference finals odds. And I'll play them both. If that's your two teams, grab your ticket. You're on 45 to one. Forget it ever existed. And now you suddenly make it to the playoffs. And you're like, oh, hey, you know what I have? I have that nice ticket over here. That for matchup, I don't mind. I don't love the idea of uh, it just you're chasing so many things that have to line up, especially are, we talked about this. I, I disagree with this. Okay. Are the Bucks and the Clippers both going to be in the NBA title conversation come May? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, assuming assuming that you know, Giannis and Kawhi right. are healthy, yes. But you still have that you have that same injury issue with uh, with any of these. So then now we're just talking about return, right? Like I, I will talk about but the straight bets that I have, and like I bet those too, right? I have yeah. I have I already have a, a sizable Clippers position. Like I'm yeah. I'm in on the Clippers right now. Yeah. Um, but. I like I baked into that is yeah I know if Kawhi doesn't come back or doesn't come back healthy or re-injures it or Paul George goes down if either of those guys get hurt I know that but it's the same thing with the Warriors yeah. and Steph I mean there's sure. there's degrees of probability right like right. there's degrees of, of injury probability this is to use an example here because like Giannis has been a tank Giannis played through a hyperextended knee and dropped fifty in the finals in the get in closeout game. Um, I expect the Bucs and the Clippers to be in that title conversation. I don't expect the Grizzlies to be in that title conversation. I don't expect the Mavericks or Wolves to be in that title conversation or the Pelicans or the Blazers. And they might later. And at that point, that's when you have to like pay attention as I do because it's my job and start being like, oh, hey, you know what? The Pelicans might actually have it. Let's put it in a, Pel- a Pelicans Bucks position. Or, yeah. you know what? I think the Hawks are, are really are different with DeJounte Murray. Let's put it in a Hawks, you know, Suns position, whatever it is. And if you ask like, are you betting all of these all the time? Like, am I betting warrior? Am I betting all those three teams and all versus those three teams in all combinations? The answer is no. Like it's based on, like I don't have warriors or Celtics positions right now, again, because I have concerns about their regular season performance and things going sideways. Yeah. And so I want to see like what that regular season looks like, but this does get into the question, Brandon, before we get into the picks of buying the dip sometimes, I think. Yeah. I think sometimes behind the dip, I actually think we do it too much. I think I, in particular, buy the dip too much. Of like we did, it, we like you and I cost ourselves this last year. It was an emotional hedge. We can admit that with the Lakers, but like we bet a lot with and a good comparison here. We never bet the Nets. Did you bet? Did you bet the Nets at almost at, like never. almost at any point? Never. Never. Like- Never for any series, never conference, never nope. title. I wouldn't do it. I could not do it. I was Dr. Seussing the Nets. Yeah. Would not, could not, cannot, did not. I bet them in the series because after I did the film work, I was like, oh, I like this matchup. And then if you go back, it's, it, sorry, but I will go ahead and say this. Like, look, game one was a bonkers ending. <sighs> that game goes a little bit differently. And all of a sudden that series may look different. I'm not saying they would have won. They wouldn't have because that team sucked, but it might've looked a little bit different. Um, but what I will say is all through the year, I said, you can't bet nets. I went on, you better, you bet a radio program. I'm often on, you can't bet nets. I went on radio programs around the country. Yeah. You, the favorites. I said, you can't bet nets. So, but we bet the Lakers yeah. sometimes in a dip. <laughs> I, I think. Now I'll say this. We bet, I bet the Bucks is a dip. And I think that that was a good bet. I think I got unlucky with the Chris Middleton injury. Yeah. But these no, are I the, agree. This is the thing. Don't, don't bet title or conference futures based off of this team was here and is considered this good. And now they're lower. You need to really like, you have to have investor confidence that that team is not what it looks like. I felt like the warriors, I bought the warriors dip because I was like, people are overreacting to what I think are not going to be serious injuries. And at, at full health, these two, this team is elite on defense and has Steph Curry and that ended up being right. Yeah, I mean, I think what you're saying is don't buy the dip just to buy the dip. Like just because the odds dropped off and you're like, oh man, this team is at plus 700 now. Well, just two weeks ago, they were at plus 400. I got to grab that ticket. There must be value there. Not necessarily. Right. (laughs) There is a reason that they dropped from 400 to 700. What's the reason? That's your job to figure out as the better. And maybe the reason is eh, they got unlucky. They... They missed a couple of games from whoever. 
they had a bad schedule lock game. They they lost in a buzzer beater. This is an overreaction. Great, buy the dip. You've, you've just found great value. And for me, that's why I don't want to bet on any of these favorites right now. For conference and title odds, there's so much. There's 100 games each of these teams has to play before we ever get to one of those teams winning one of these bets for us. I don't want to buy the Celtics, the Bucks, the Nets, the Clippers, the Warriors. I'm not investing anything off of this podcast on conference or title odds. I don't want to touch it because even if I like one of those teams, and I do, I'm going to find a dip somewhere because I'm going to watch every day like you are, and we're going to be on the podcast. And somewhere during the season, Steph's going to miss two weeks or someone's going to go in a three-week funk or whatever. There's going to be a dip. If there's a team I like and I can wait on it, I won't mind it. But if the dip is, hey, man, there was that fight. Remember the fight we saw on television? And now suddenly these guys aren't playing well together. And now there's rumblings and trade rumors. And now this guy looks like he might be hurt and he's playing injured. Don't buy the dip. The dip is there for a reason. Now you don't need to invest just because you're getting, quote unquote, a better number. You know, the better number still has to actually hit something at the end. So I think that's the last thing for me. The only other thought is, as far as you're you're grabbing the pairs of teams, I will say I like the idea of grabbing finals matchup far more than I like conference matchup. The reason is this. You could grab a Celtics Bucks conference matchup. Maybe you like them. Those are your two teams in the East. You're riding it out. Well, there's literally close to a 50-50 shot because the way brackets work that they might literally not even be able to play in the conference finals. We don't have that risk in the finals. There's no risk of, oops, the Celtics and Clippers are on the same half of the bracket. We can't meet each other. So I do like, be, be careful. Be careful if you're betting one of these combos. I like the title combo much better because you might have a brilliant ticket with great value that is DOA when the bracket comes out. You're right. You're absolutely right on that. Um, look, I, I do want to be clear on this. My larger unit plays are always going to be on the straight bets. Yes. But I will build these positions off of long shots because I'm getting the kind of return I am when I'm getting 20 to one, when I'm getting you know, and these conference finals bets, like I'm parlaying four sets, which that's a lot. Again, the percentage chances of that is going to be negative EV. And I understand that for me, it's comes out on as a plus EV, because again, I'm just like, is there like, what are the percentage chances that these are the one, two seeds, you know? And like, from that perspective, you wind up being yeah. at least okay for me to take the <clears throat> shot at 30 to one, which is what I'm getting some of these on that returns. Nice. I'm not leveraging my bankroll on it. I'm not yeah. betting heavy units on it. I will. It's smattering and it helps right. with my final profit margin. Yeah, look, look sometimes it's nice to have that ticket to show well, off. Like here's my 75 yeah, yeah, yeah. to one. Here's, I got it. Thing. If you're going to build these positions like me, you have to, I did learn this. You have to start getting, I have to get bigger numbers because I'm chewing into my percentage every right. single week by, cause I'm betting consistently. Like I don't leave these things alone because I'm taking in new information and sometimes overreacting. And that's something I'm working on. I'm going to try and do that less. Yeah. Um, another thing, if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I want to, I like the idea of like of betting on a consistent basis to build these positions on title or whatever, even if it's just straight title bets. Uh, and you're like, but I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I have a job, I have a life. Um, you can just basically set a reminder and then go on the action app and just check where the odds are and be like, Oh, Okay, this is higher than it was last last. Like I remember this being, you know, they were plus four fifty last month and they're plus six hundred now. Is there a reason I don't like them or that I would like them less? And if you follow the league, which if you're listening to this podcast, you you do, then you'll have a pretty good sense of those kind of things. And yeah, you'll okay. be able to hear like reactions to injuries and things like that. I will say as much as you said, like there's a reason that the dip happens, the Lot, lot of in-season movement on title odds based off of short-term injury concerns because the books basically have to be like, I have to downgrade them because I don't know if he's going to get better. That was the thing with Stefan Draymond is they were like, well, they're hurt and they're not back yet. So we have to downgrade them. Yeah. And I was like, there's been no word out of out of Golden State that these that they're concerned. Right. None. There's been no, the, the beat writers will tell you and we will tell, will tell us and we will tell you. Yeah. Like they'll tweet it and we will talk, talk about it on this podcast. If there's well, like a, this is concerning. And that's where the, to toot your horn for you, that's where you're, you will bring great value to this podcast because you have through your work in the industry, built those connections to have some of the good insights and connections to say, Hey, you know what? 
I haven't heard anything really too worrying about the Warriors. Yeah. But we're fine. We're fine. Don't worry. Cause, cause I went out, I was in on the Warriors, not as early as you, but then I went in harder and I was like, all right, this is a Warriors year. I've seen this before we're going. And then we got to the Steph funk and I was still okay. It was a long season. We get there when the Draymond back injury happened. I just was like, Nope, I'm out. It's I, this doesn't seem right, but you're the insider. And that's where come back to the buckets podcast all year long. You're going to hear from Matt from the sources and from his knowledge of just how does this stuff go? How are these reports coming out? You've got to be able to get some of that information and track things. 